Hello and welcome. My guests today are the actors and directors of the new film Chapak, Meghna Gulzar, Deepika Padukone, Vikram Nessi. Thank you so much for speaking to NDTV. Deepika, if I can start with you. Uh, it was a, it, I mean, from what one has read and followed of uh, Lakshmi's real life, uh, it was a tough role and uh, something that's a bit dark. What was it when you read the role that was your challenge for it and what is it that you feared? Like what thrilled you and what, what were you scared of? Let me, let me come to the, f the fear bit first. I think the fear was how do, uh, how do we achieve the look? Um, I had, I've never done a prosthetic heavy film before. Um, and so at every step as Meghna was going through the narration, my thought was how much are we going to do? How are we going to achieve this? Um, so they were all technical questions that I had in my head. Uh, am I going to look like Lakshmi or am I going to look like someone who's, you know, been a, uh, uh, you know, who's probably been through an attack? So those were the kind of thoughts that were going through in my head. Um, and that's the only thing I thought of as a, as a challenge. Um, the things that I think, I think apart from that, uh, again, I think the, the, the positive things or the, the things that I was looking forward to are really, I think as an actor, the fact that I was getting to get, uh, my, sink my teeth into something like this. Um, I had never played a real life character before, a living real life character. So that's the first time I'm doing that. Uh, so that kind of comes with its, you know, with its, with a sense of responsibility, um, you know, and for an actor, you always look forward to that person's validation. Um, but yes, I mean, as an actor looking forward to playing this kind of a role. But I think overarching all of this is really the, the story of uh, trauma, but of triumph and of the human spirit and of hope. Uh, that really was the takeaway from, uh, from Malti's journey uh, and from the entire story and the narrative that I heard. I think the fact that after being through something like this and after having gone through so much, um, the fact that one comes out victorious, that there is hope, um, I think that really sets a lovely example for not just other acid attack survivors, but also I think for us as a, at, you know, society at large. You know, Meghna, it's interesting uh, that Deepika spoke about uh, achieving the look. And um, uh, I, I was thinking that when you were thinking of uh, casting for the film, was she your first thought? I mean, physically, you know, in terms of height and all, what is it that you look for when you are actually casting? Is it the visual or is it what the actor brings to the table? How did you arrive at her? So I go for visual mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. because it makes my job easier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I really feel that we're coming to watch a film. Um, the most heightened sense is your sense of sight. And so everything needs to um, kind of appeal to that first, right? When you have a character based on real life and you have a, a visual reference, you would want to cast an actor which who will be similar or will have a resemblance to the real life character. If you don't have a visual reference, you know, you, you start imagining your character in your mind by the time you're reaching the first end of the first draft of your script. Um, and once you have that definition of your character, the actor's face pops into your mind very, very uh, intuitively, I'm guessing. That's what happened with her as well. Mm, way back in 2016 is when we completed the first draft of the film. And uh, I had seen pictures of Lakshmi before the attack. And more then than now, Deepika of say 22, 23, because we've seen those pictures as well. We kind of probed the internet a little bit. The resemblance between them is uncanny, you know. Um, so yeah, that I think that for, for the audience to connect to the character, particularly because it's such a contemporary reference. She's, she's part of our today, right? The slightest disconnect would throw the film down, you know, in, it would come in the way of the viewing experience. So it's important to go visual. You know, you spoke about the fact that uh, 
the look was a challenge and prosthetic uh, obviously were used. What is it in, in terms of, it was your first film with prosthetics, uh, in terms of body language, uh, emoting through something that's almost like a veil on your face. I mean, it's not your face. What was that challenge like? You do body language, I'll talk about the face. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to say that it is my face. Um, and uh, I mean that at, um, at a deeper level and I mean that even at a face value level. Uh, because I remember when I looked at myself in the mirror for the first time, I felt like, I just felt like myself. Um, nothing had changed. And, I, and we looked at each other and I said, you know, she said, there you go, that's your character and that's the film. Everything else after that was felt easy, uh, easier. Because I think once you found the character and, and, and that voice and, and what is it that the character is saying without saying. Now, of course, every scene you're saying something, but there is, there's always layers within layers. And I think characters kind of say a lot of things without having to say them. This, I think for me at least, was one of those things that just accepting myself for the way I am. And this is exactly who I am. Whether it was this face, whether it's another face, this is who I am. Um, and somewhere to kind of define and highlight the fact that physicality is not everything. It, it, it doesn't need to be, it should not be. Um, I think the body language, I, between Meghna and I, we kind of came to this um, understanding that we were not going to make me look like Lakshmi. Um, so after having spent a lot of time with her, there are things that I picked up and there are things that I decided to let go of. How do you find that mid part between glimpses and nuances of Lakshmi every now and then, but also playing it like me or how I would? Um, and I think that's what we've managed to do through the film. So when people see it, sometimes they'll see me, but sometimes they also feel this, the resemblance and the similarity be between Lakshmi. Uh, small things, it could be a head tilt, it could be, you know, a smile, you know, I allow you to discover that as you watch the film. But so there are certain things that I picked up while I spent time with her and, you know, um, and used that. And over and above all of these things that, you know, that you do externally, you've got to, you've got to feel it, you know, and that's the most important thing. I can have this face on, I can have another face on, I can have this face on. At the end of the day, if you're not, it, so no, it didn't feel like a mask. No, it didn't feel like there was something um, that came in the way because at the end of the day, I, 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 truly believe and I'd, I'd like to believe that I'm that sort of actor where if I feel something I'm able to express and emote and at least that's what I've used in this film um, and I you know I hope that people see that. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Uh, Meghna it's also interesting because you know uh, whether it was Talwar or Razi and now uh, Chapak uh, you've picked on stories which are there in the public domain. And I have to say that, especially with Talwar, I remember, you know, uh, being a journalist, we, we followed that. And I remember thinking before the story, you know, what is it going to be? And I was pleasantly really surprised because it was such an interesting take. And, you know, you, you sit with the film throughout. Uh, what is it that is, again, you know, I use the word challenge, but you know, to take something that is out in the public eye, but yet keep it interesting, keep it fresh, and, you know, make the audience sit there for two and a half or three hours? Um, I think two guiding factors. One is perspective. The other is intent. Uh, two people can tell, or even three people, or even three newspapers, two TV channels can report the same thing in completely opposite ways because their intents are different, right? And uh, that will then define how you will consume it. So perspective and intent is one. But I honestly believe that, and this I had got asked this during Talwar that, humko to waisi sab kuch malum hai. Aap naya kya dikhayenge humko film mein? This was what I had gotten asked, and for in my own head, I didn't give this answer out because it would have sounded very arrogant. 
but in my own head i was i always believe that everybody will know something about it some people will know everything about it and somewhere in between i'll find my audience and you did and <laughs> hats off to you for that yeah. vikrant uh, you know i was reading somewhere today this morning that uh, you said somewhere that some time back somebody told you that you're not never going to get these big films or and and this is a big film you know uh, it's a meghna gulzar deepika padukone film and you play this very interesting uh, strong character so tell us more about that uh i generally don't uh, to begin with uh, the the beginning of the question yes a lot of people did uh because when i started off with television in 2004 i had almost done a decade of television and uh, luckily for me uh, whatever shows i did they did decently well and there was a preconceived notion then and i i think that it's sort of blurring out now uh, i think the ott platform has an important role in that the lines are blurring that you know television actors will never be hired uh, for important parts in feature films maybe a couple of scenes here and there uh, but you will never get a central part and that was something that really irked me then and uh, i wanted to prove myself right and also at the same time at the cost of sounding pompous wanting to prove them wrong uh coming back to the second part of the question uh, see i i have uh, never tried to you know uh, evaluate as to what i gain or what i will not gain from a particular project uh i am i am someone who relies a lot on my gut uh and for all pragmatic reasons you know i i am a huge fan of talwar mm-hmm. uh it's it's got one of the finest climaxes ever written and executed i agree so uh i wanted to collaborate with her. i wanted to work with her she's been forthcoming and kind enough to acknowledge my work after a death in the country and i also said this in the paper that had it been a couple of scenes i would have been a part of it the length of the characters never mattered to me um and i don't think it will uh, for any time uh, any time soon because i really don't want to think too much i'm hired as an actor uh i would rather focus on my job do my job and leave the rest on other people who are sort of dividing their each other's loads and you know uh, you spoke about the ott platform uh, it is a fact everyone says this now and has been saying for some time that content is king and all of that but and this is a question please for everyone uh, is there a fact now it's almost seeming i mean yes uh, war and uh, kabir singh were the two biggest hits of the year but if you look around it almost seems like the smaller film is mainstream now you know so whether it is a dream girl or that off subject is bringing more people to the theater depends what the definition of hit is i mean i i think somehow the formula or that big event film yes there was a war and it did make a lot of money which i suppose is is great in its sense but again the story is is really taking center place is that now there to stay or is it again you know something as they say so let me put it this way uh, in purely numeric terms you will judge a film for its success in comparison to what it cost to make it yeah it's a thumb rule so if you compare razi to talwar and i will only use my own films um razi did much bigger numbers but talwar was made at say x and it earned 3x it's a hit film it's a blockbuster <laughs> <laughs> right so uh, that's the thumb rule after that is where your critical appreciation and your audience appreciation to the content comes in um what has changed now is that a film is not only judged by the numbers that it makes it's also being judged by for the content that it is putting out there the shift has happened there whether it's the audience whether it's the studios whether it's the trade whether it's the makers the actors the shift has happened towards also uh, acknowledging the hand of the content in the success in, in terms of sorry uh, can i yeah, add something sure, to that sure, can i please course. add something to that uh this is absolutely yeah. personal observation yeah. I've, i've done uh, like a fair bit of ott in the last 2 uh, years uh now we see a lot of hollywood films dubbed in hindi making more money than hindi films mm. the reason that is because you know there are no boundaries anymore mm. for example an x show 
which I did last year, was launched on an X date and it was aired in 160 countries worldwide at one time. So today you are not just creating uh, content uh, which is you know, society specific or culture specific. Today you are creating content which is global in nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is also one of the reasons and I think the archival value of a film, for me personally, is, is what defines its success. Um, like today also, like if, if at all I'm watching a film like Parosan or if I'm watching Marches or you know, we spoke about Marches the other day, it's, it's almost a 30 year old film and people still talk about it. Like, Jimmy Paji is a friend of mine and unko aaj bhi matches ke sawal poochhe jate hain. So there it is. Or matches ka music abhi bhi. No, so, you know, it's interesting because, like you said, this is a story of a struggle and a triumph. And it could have sort of, you know, that very global appeal in many ways. And, of course, uh, you know, you financially sort of... Uh, put uh, money into the film, so are we seeing some sort of future as Deepika sort of getting into projects uh, at a production level as well? Oh, where I may not yeah. act? And yeah. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, I, I will not necessarily produce every film I act in, and I will not necessarily act in any <laughs> film that I produce. Yeah. But if eventually, whatever is best for the film. You know, and so eventually whatever is best for the film and at that point if the writer and director feel like I'm, I can add value to that film then I will be a part of it and if they feel no, you know, you can, we want, you know, we'd like your support creatively but we feel like we can, you know, we should go with somebody else, I will 100% respect that decision. Uh, and vice versa, you know, if I'm, I mean, I'm doing a film now that I start in March, I'm not producing that film, I'm only acting in that film. So I think it really depends on a gut at that point. What is it that you feel at that point? Also, these are not individual independent decisions. Um, these are collective decisions. So whatever is right for the film at that point. This has obviously uh, been an emotional journey. I mean, the film, the story. Uh, it's out there now. And uh, your team showed us this lovely video, an experiment that Deepika did, where you actually went out, you know, uh, as yourself, as you say. And uh, why did you think that was important? For the audience, let's clarify that, as yes, Malti. As Malti. <laughs> Uh, but why did you think that was important? And I have to say that when I was watching the film, and it's easy for us, I suppose for me to watch it and say, oh my God, why are they looking at her like that? But I mean, if one hasn't sort of been through it or thought about it, you know, I mean, I don't think we're great people in, in terms of a society, we do tend to judge. So why was it important for you to do that or as a team for you guys to have that out? I think it was important for us to just gauge beyond this group of people who've now, you know, lived with this subject for, you know, for us a year, year and a half, for her maybe more, to just understand what, what is it that, how is it that society views girls who have been through acid violence. Um, and I think we were pleasantly surprised both ways. You know, I think we were pleasantly surprised um, to see how some people reacted in a way that was a bit, um, what is the right word? Cringy? No. No. It, um, this it is awkwardness. You can't, you let, can't say let, cringy. It's just awkward. There's discomfort. Yeah. Unfamiliar. Yeah. Unfamiliar. And and then, and then there were people who were extremely comfortable, and you know, so I think it was just throwing light on that, on how you know. Society views this very, very differently, and there are all kinds of people. Um, and I think that's what we're also trying to achieve through this film: normalize this, uh, make it more inclusive. Um, because, you know, when you speak to the girls, the the first thing that they will say is that, you know, they're very comfortable with the way they look. They look at themselves in the mirror every day. It's it's when when we as society view the girls. 
we're not able to look look them in the eye and have a have a straight conversation with them because we're not comfortable with 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 their appearance and that's because of us not being um exposed to or uh, you know i think there are various factors i don't think it's you know it's one factor but i think and and then our definition of physical beauty and what physical beauty should be uh, so i think there's a, there's a lot of factors as to why we look at you know the girls a certain way so i think it's to throw light on you know on on the way society views girls who who experienced acid violence and not just uh, in terms of inclusiveness i'm sure all, i mean all of you did interact with lakshmi do you think a lot more can be done to sort of uh, you know not just include them but sort of stop these attacks whether it's in terms of faster punishments banning the sale of acid which has been going on see stopping the attacks is a preventive thing which is as important but what about the curative measures mm -hmm. what about what has already happened you need to you can't erase history but you need to you need to cure uh you know the hurt right so the inclusion is what these girls look for <coughs> um the normalization of it when when they move around in in public because when they are within themselves they are completely normal they are not uncomfortable with the way each, they, they look amongst themselves they are not even com com uncomfortable with the way they look when they are in public they are uncomfortable with our discomfort you know that's what we need to overcome um engaging them giving them a a, so, a sense of purpose a, a sense a source of livelihood uh unfortunately we are such an appearance based society that it becomes very difficult to make place for somebody who is uh not hit, hitting the normal parameters of physical appearance that's what needs to change as well All right. Thank you so much. <laughs>